What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Plant Power Dad Hour. My name is Corey, and with me, as always, is my trusty sidekick and friend, Plant Pace Gabriel. What's up, man? Hey, it's good to see you. You know, it's a it's a warm, beautiful day up here, up north in Virginia, but it looks like it's a little colder down uh, down south in Florida. Your way. Hey, this is Florida snowy windows. No, listen, folks. This if you're watching if you're watching on video uh, and not listening on the podcast, then you're seeing my snowy white background, and it's moving. The snow is actually moving. This is the magic of technology. I wish it was snowing in Florida, but funny stat, funny trivia, Gabe. Did you, can you know, can you name the last year that it actually snowed in Florida? Uh, 19, 2006. 1985. Okay, okay. I was five years old looking out my window and we had the light. The the mean the, okay so you mean the last time it snowed in your neck of the woods in florida yeah in florida or, in florida yes, in yes, florida yes. all florida um i don't know about that i mean i'm in central florida and it's very rare I so mean, you're so Corey, are you saying you just gave me a stat that could have that could change within the within like 30 miles of your your home to okay possible it's possible yeah actually I mean, Corey is florida so i am the entire state if of it florida. didn't happen to Corey while he's been alive that's it true. didn't happen in Florida. Central, I'll just say Central Florida. All right, all right. Which, which, in, which encompasses seven counties. So who knows? All right. So <laughs> not all of Florida, though. North Florida could have had. Exactly. Okay. But you know what you can't necessarily do too well in the snow is plant a garden. Or at least from what I understand, you can't plant a garden. But guys, I have to admit to you, like I don't have a green thumb like Gabriel. All right. But I, I know I can. I can do it. I, mean, I see that thumb. Listen, I know I can grow something. I have a great yard. I have the ability to do it. I have the ability to learn something new. And that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to ask Gabriel a couple questions, just like you would. And um, I'm probably going to start with growing my own greens because I feel like it's the easiest, right? Maybe it's the easiest to grow some kale. Um, but I have concerns, just like you guys probably do, that also are not very good at gardening or haven't tried, I'll say, like me, I haven't tried. And um, I think that uh, the concerns are, you know, how much water? What type of soil? Are there bugs that are going to be eating it? What can I do? I know I have little rabbits, little bunnies that jump around my whole yard. So how do I, you know, make sure my kale is protected? Even though I like feeding bunnies, I don't want them eating my kale, right? So I, I guess, Gabriel, like, do you want me to just go ahead and start with my questions? Or you want to give us a little preface? Like, what do you think? Yeah, so 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 the preface, I'll just I'll just preface it and say this is part one. Part two will be uh, next time's episode, which will uh, be more so my recommendations based off of Corey's kind of beginner questions, and then we'll kind of kind of go from there. So it'll be uh, a bit of maybe a consult. So if you are yourself thinking about putting a garden in in this 2021 growing season, uh, this upcoming spring or summer or fall, then uh, then this will hopefully be very helpful to you, especially if you're kind of just wanting to get your feet wet and and not too um, not too too knowledgeable on on the topic of maybe gardening or growing your own food. So we'll we'll preface it with that, and then we'll also preface it with saying that what I do recommend or the questions I ask will um, just the nature of it will will turn into somewhat site specific, somewhat zone specific, somewhat location specific. So Corey is in central Florida. I'm guessing your perennial climate is going to be somewhere around uh, 8B or 9. And so when Corey gets things going, it is going to be a lot sooner than when I get things going about a month. And then it's going to be maybe um, two months before people get things going, maybe up north, up Vermont, Maine, uh, that type of uh, type of climate, you know, Idaho, uh, yeah. Montana. So with that being said, let's get started. Yeah, I um, my first thing is, you know, how much space do I need? Should I should I actually plant in the actual ground itself? Should I get a small greenhouse or should I do like a lifted kind of potted situation? Um, if I am wanting to start with kind of growing my greens, what is the first thing that I should think about for location? All right. So first off with growing greens is, um, are you wanting to, you, you're, to, to start out with, you're not going to expect to grow all your greens that you're going to consume. Let's Correct. just get that out there. Um, although when you get things rolling, Corey, in your climate, you can grow greens. Uh, you can grow different types of greens all year, which means that yes, you could 
hypothetically get all your greens from your from from a smaller garden space just just understanding that there could be different right spinach when it's colder out even sweet potato greens uh for when it's the heat of the summer both can be eaten in a similar way both can be you know sauteed or smoothie whatever you want to do with those and so when we're thinking about gardening for a beginner i would say the lat here, here's what i would do i'll go from best or worst to best Worst in my mind for a beginner gardener would be some containers and some pots, unless you're in a balcony situation. If you have a yard, I would not do the pots and containers. Number one, because you're going to spend a lot of soil to fill, spend a lot of money on soil to fill them up. You're not going to get a lot of production out of them. And they are extremely finicky. Basically, it comes down to they will dry out much quicker than anything else, or they can soak up a lot of moisture quicker than anything else and kind of have it soak, sit and soak. And so... <clears throat> which both can be problematic and both can take a lot of um, husbandry um, work. And so that's what I would not recommend. Uh, the second option would be, which, which is if you planned on, if you want to get your feet wet, but also have, a, have like bigger plans is to grow in the ground. You know, you can get a spot ready, do this or that. You really want to get your kids involved, do, do all that nine yards. That is a great option. But for a beginner, beginner, I would not recommend that. I would recommend starting, unless you're a beginner that says, hey, in the next six months, I want this figured out and I'm gonna grow 50% of my family's food. Then that's a different conversation. But in your case, what we're gonna look at doing is more so in the raised bed side of things. So a raised bed that can be a four foot by eight foot, that's a pretty simple measurement because it really only takes three pieces of lumber to put it together, right? Um, uh, or excuse me, only takes two pieces of, or yes, three pieces of lumber two eight foot boards, one eight foot board that's been cut in four foot sections. And so you've got one raised bed there. Again, six pieces of lumber, you could build two raised beds, this and that. Um, they're easy to fill, they're easy to get started. You can mow that grass down really low where they're at, um, come in and either use a spade to kind of get the weeds out um, and, and just take off that first inch or half inch of, of grass so that that doesn't grow up through the, the soil mix that you're gonna add in there. Uh, can be done in 20 or 30 minutes, right? Kids can help you out getting a raised bed together. And then you're gonna fill it with either a bulk potting soil from your local um, landscaping companies. Uh, I know in central Florida, there's actually some that sell vegan um, uh, compost and soil amendment mixes that you can fill a raised bed with. Uh, and so very simple. Basically, this is why the raised bed is your best bet. Within an afternoon, you could take a virgin piece of ground and in two to three hours, you can be growing something in it same day, same wow. afternoon. But but here's the thing, like you said two, you said two eight foot boards, right? Is that what you said? Three eight foot boards. Okay, so three eight foot boards cut in what? Nope, so two boards that you leave, the, leave, leave, leave as they are and one board that you cut in half. You're saying four by eight or what is the size of the board? Oh, it, it can, I, I wouldn't recommend a four by eight. I would recommend something like a two by six. Okay. Basically, it's going to be about this, you know, you could do a two by eight, be a little taller, but a two by six is going to be about this far off the ground. Um, yeah. You're going to fill that basically to the top with pot or with, a, with a soil mix, because okay. as, as it condenses, it'll come down about an inch or so. Uh, and then you'll want to just keep it about an inch below that, that, um, that board um, throughout. Just screw them together, it. just screw them with a screw gun. Correct. Uh, what I do is I would take um, maybe some scrap lumber, or if you need to, you could pick up, um, pick up an extra board that you'll set um, in the corner. So you'll yeah. set a board in the corner and then you'll screw into that. So you'll screw here and you'll screw there because if you take that cut board and you try screwing into that, uh, to the end of a board, it won't actually set the screw won't set. So you want to right. have a board there. Um, uh, it, it can be done. It, it can be done otherwise too. You could put, just put it in the ground, have a rock on the sides, or, uh, I mean, it, it can be done very, very simply you, you don't need to necessarily get too caught up with making it, you know, bulletproof, but, but making it sturdy is, is obviously, uh, something you want to do. So the, the whole thing, if I was looking down from an aerial view, it would be six feet long by two eight feet, feet long, eight, eight feet, feet long feet. by four feet wide. Okay. And, and like I said, that's, you know, with, with, with the soil and everything you could, you could be up and running uh, definitely for less than a hundred dollars, depending on where you're sourcing things, maybe 50 to $75, um, for that, which, which in essence could grow 
probably all the lettuce you're going to want in the springtime, maybe, maybe a good portion of the spinach that you're going to eat. And if you filled that bed up with kale or collard greens, uh, that, that would, that would feasibly, um, depending on how many greens you eat, uh, would do a good portion of a, of a family of two to fours, uh, greens. Okay. And how, how tall do I fill up the dirt? So you're going to, you're going to fill it up with a compost soil blend, um, that can be gotten for, and you're going to fill it up with somewhere around, uh, one to two yards of, of soil of this mixture. And, uh, you're going to fill it up all the way to the top. Because as weather happens, as rain happens, and just as, as it kind of settles, you're going to see that it'll settle down about an inch or, or an inch or so. Um, okay. And that's where it'll be. You don't want to start an inch low because then you'll be two inches below that board. Okay, got it. So that's perfect. Okay. So, so basically, Cor, I just want to stop there. That's something that unless you're someone like me that's going to put in half an acre of permanent bed, vegetable, you know, in ground type growing things. The beauty of the raised bed is number one, you could, if you, if you looked hard enough and, or you, you had a few weeks to kind of just uh, put it into the, put it into the atmosphere that you need, that you need some boards. A lot of times you can find repurposed lumber. Uh, you can find something that either someone's, you know, taken out a raised bed or whatnot. Things you want to look out for is make sure it's not treated lumber. You're going to want to go with untreated lumber here, which means that in seven, eight, nine years, you're going to need to either put new lumber on there um, or kind of just let that bed be like it is because it will be quite established there. Um, so understanding that. And then um, the second, so the big thing is what I was going to get to kind of go off track there is uh, why this is nice, unless you're going to put a half acre in, is because of how um, systematic you could really do this. A four by eight in your yard, it's going to look nice. You know, you can make it look nice. And then, oh, wow, the kids really like this and we'd like some more greens. You can put one right next to it. You already know how much soil you're going to need. You already know this or that. Oh, wow, the kids really like it. Maybe we should grow a tomato, a couple tomato plants this year and some pepper plants in a bed. Three, four, it can be modulized really simply. Uh, and, and honestly, for someone who has, who, who's growing more so just vegetables, not so staple crops, it's a great option. Okay. And how do I, before I put a thing in there, before I put a thing in there to grow, um, how do I keep the bugs out and not even bugs? I mean, I'm worried about these bunnies. Okay. So the raised bed has a great effect of keeping rabbits out. As long okay. as there's other things for them to eat, um, you would, you would be, you're going to be pretty good on, uh, on keeping them out the rabbit wise. If you have a groundhog around, uh, you, you need to either, uh, fence if I have a fenced in yard or talk to someone about trapping the groundhog relocate it whatever whatever there uh, but rabbit wise they should they should understand that boundary and if they don't you can always uh you can get some different uh kind of noxious smelling things to actually spray around the perimeter of the bed not so family friendly during the summertime um, but something that you may have to do once to say hey rabbits stay out of here but raised beds you shouldn't have an issue with Okay, and what and about- if you did, And if you did, and if you did a simple uh, garden type, you know, you can get them at uh, some of the home improvement stores and just a fence like this tall uh, that actually okay. looks pretty nice will also keep them out. Anything about flying bugs? They are going with? to be there. You live in Florida, beautiful, sunny, warm Florida where there's not a frost to kill the bugs. Uh, they are going to be there. And so it's growing the right things during the right season. Okay. Don't expect, okay. and, and there are some different things organically. You know, there's a spray. We don't, I want to get into it too much because I know people are going to, oh, yeah. but basically there's, there's some simple things you can do on your brassicas. If you try growing them into the late spring, you're going to have some different caterpillars. You're going to have some, um, some, some cabbage lopers or some, uh, what, what basically brassica loving um, larvae of butterflies and moths. And yeah. uh, there's a spray called Bacillus thuringiensis. It's based off of um, an, active in, uh, an active bacteria in the soil. Uh, and that will basically um, fend off the, the caterpillars. Um, but then again, if you don't want to do that, it's a simple, organic, very, very not, non, non-invasive thing to use. Uh, unless you're a caterpillar. Um, but, yeah. uh, but if you did not want to do that, then it's just growing the right things in the right time. You know, during your winter is when you would grow things like spinach and lettuce and, and your kales and things like that. And then during your summertime, uh, you, you may, you, you're going to look at growing things, maybe like a, a collard green that, that 
more than likely you would have to use some sort of spray for uh, or something like sweet potato greens or uh, auric or um, an amaranth green. There's different options. And, and in America, we don't really know them. But if you're in Africa or Asia or um, Central South, South America, where they do have this heat and these bugs, they find things that can grow at different seasons. Okay. So if I want to start with, uh, you know, I know uh, what soil to use. I know how to build the bed. I know that I need to think about what I grow when. Um, I, can can my first thing be kale? Is is that a good thing to start with? Yeah, if you were going to grow kale, you would want to get that get in, get that in the ground here within the next couple of weeks in your climate. Okay. And do I get seeds off of the internet? Do I so just that, that's a that is it? That's a wonderful question. Do you buy seeds? Do you get starts? Where do you get what? You know, how, how do I get a plant to grow in, in my yeah. raised bed? Uh, in a four by eight raised bed, realistically, uh, you could get a 20, 20 kale plants in there spaced wow. out somewhat effectively. You, you could grow bigger kale plants and grow maybe. 10 of them, 10 or 12 of them. Um, but you know, you could fit 20 in there if you, if you really wanted to just trying different varieties. And so that is the question of, do you want to learn how to start your own seeds? Um, or do you want to get some plants? Now you probably have some nurseries around you within maybe a 20 to 30 minute drive. You probably have some home improvement stores that would have some starts, some different vegetable starts, um, some different options there. I would look at a garden center. You probably have some garden centers with, within your local area um, and they will have started plants. Now, can you guarantee that they've been done everything organically and this or that? Uh, hopefully they'll have options there, uh, but can you trust that anywhere? Not so much. And so uh, I would recommend your first time doing it, go and get some starts. Go and get some started plants, as long as they have varieties that you like. And then once the kids get get involved with it and they think, hey, wow, dad, this is pretty cool. We're growing, we're growing our own kale. You, you, you send the three, you, you send the two younger ones out there and uh, Izzy's inside helping, you know, get things ready. And, or, or she may be out there too, but I'm sure, I'm sure everyone's going to want to, going to want to pick them. You know, I, I just imagine she probably would get more yeah. involved cooking them in the kitchen with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they're out there, you know, picking them. And then that you, you start going online and say, Hey, this is, these are the different seed options. What do you guys want to grow? And then you realize that there's 35 to 150 different types of kale out there that you can grow with your family. And that's when you, when you, when you're ready to, to, to kind of move off into not just green cabbage, green kale, red tomato, green pepper, right? Those four, when you're ready to kind of move away and say, all right, what are those other fun things that we can grow instead of just what the garden center has? That's when I would recommend starting, starting your own seed and, and realizing that in a raised bed, you can start your own seeds very simply. Yeah. Okay. But I'd um, recommend getting starts first if you have them available. Okay. Got it. And um, two, two things I want to mention too, two kind of things to, I know there's more, we might need more, but two, two final things here is uh, how much water and then also how long does it take a seed, a little seed to grow into some kale? All right. And so water is going to be on a raised bed like that is just going to be something that you check every other day or so. And basically what you want to do is just stick your finger in the bed. And if it's still got a good bit of moisture there about an inch down under like an, a half an inch to an inch below. So you stick your finger down there and there's still some good moisture there. It should be fine. Now, when it's just blazing hot in summer, you, you know, you could water every day you, okay. you're, you're, with a raised bed like that. Good drainage. You're going to have trouble over watering. Um, but in the dead of the, in the dead of summer, you're, you're going to want to water every day uh, and just give it a good, give it a good watering. Now there's times when you need to water more, there's times you need to water less. When you have a new transplant that you've just put in there, you know, you go to the store, you buy these plants and you put them in there. You're going to want to water them heavily once or twice, like maybe twice that day you plant them. So I would recommend actually you plant them uh, in at dusk or kind of towards the end of the day after the sun's starting to set so that they have a longer period to somewhat adjust and then get out there that next day, water them in. And then really you, you just kind of water them every day and they should be established. Uh, but if you're talking about like a bed that maybe you're planting a summer type green, so a, a green that's going to grow, not it's not going to be more of a traditional like a kale or a spinach, 
um, but it's going to be something that can grow in the, the heat of Florida summer, something like a sweet potato green, which are super fun to grow, very tasty, very, very prolific. It's going to cover the whole bed or it's going to cover that whole portion there. That's going to keep a lot of the heat out. That's going to keep a lot of the evaporation from, from, a, from happening. And so you're going to find you're going to need to water that less than say okay. putting in new transplants. Okay. That makes sense. And then cool. the seeds, you said the seeds there. So if you're talking about kale, if we're talking about brassicas, which would include kale, collards, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, kohlrabi, you know, different things like that, then you're talking about starting seeds around four to eight weeks before you want to plant it. Okay. So inside you're going to get them started four to four to eight weeks before, and then you'll get them uh, transplanted out. But again, if you're just getting started, there's a little bit more of a process there called hardening off where you got to get them established to kind of the sunshine, you know, the, the heavy sunshine, this or that. Um, but you could also just plant from seed as well. If you wanted to out there, you could, you know, you, you could just dribble some seeds in there. Um, uh, but your best bet going to be starting, starting, um, getting some transplants that are already What's started. That? The specific question about the seeds was like, how long does it take from seed to actual plant? Okay, about 70, well, it depends. Brassicas, about 50 to 75 days. Okay. Lettuce, 40 to 45 to 45 to 60 days. Spinach, you plant it at the right time from seed. You're, you know, you're planting it, directly sowing it into the bed, direct seeding it into the bed. Uh, it could be 20 days, 25 days before you're actually harvesting. So, so some quicker, some, some slower. Okay. But kale would be probably the 50 to 75 day mark, right? If you're wanting it for like the big kale leaves that you buy at the grocery store. Now, if you want to get a baby, baby kale mix, then you would direct seed that into the bed and it would be somewhere around 25 days. Wow. Okay. And that would be one that you just come in with your scissors or a kitchen knife you know, scissors probably better with the kids and you just come in, you grab the little bits, you put them in your salad bowl and, you know. That's incredible. And and the type of water I use, I could just use, I mean, city water or whatever. Is that cool? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing you don't have a rain, a rainwater catchment system on your home. So uh, whatever no. water you have would be good. <laughs> yeah, that's no. Okay, cool. All right. Brilliant. Well, I mean, dude, this is, I mean, I know there's a lot of sections here and there's a lot of things to discuss, but this gives me a good kind of weekend project. I don't know if it'll be this weekend, but it's something that I could do and uh, think about and get over to the store and get those boards and uh, just cut it up. I mean, yeah. And it's something that anyone can do almost anywhere. Um, it's a beautiful thing. Corey lives in a climate where you can have something growing in the ground in that raised bed 365 days of the year. Yeah, you, know, you have something that can do it, which is very nice. Uh, way up north, not so not so much. Where I live, specific things can definitely grow, and and you could use different um, different techniques to to keep them growing throughout the year. Um, but where you live and where many people live, it, it is nice. Where something like a, a one raised bed, you don't have to think of it like I'm going to plant it once and we'll get a good harvest from it. It's like you're going to plant it now, and then in 75, 100 days, you can plant something else. And then in 75, 100 days, you can plant something else. And so um, it's, it, it, it's nice that even from a small area, you, you, can, you can recoup a, a lot of produce. Uh, and I will say this, we have very close family friends. And um, you know, they put a raised bed in their backyard this past summer. They've got three children at home. And uh, it, it was just the talk of the town, you know. Uh, calling me, oh, we, we harvested some corn or we, we harvested broccoli. We harvested, you know, this or that. And, and uh, you, you can't, you, you really can't imagine unless you've seen it, unless you've actually experienced it as a young person, um, the, the act of planting something, waiting for it, watering it, and then actually getting to eat that or harvest that or, 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 or see what's done with that. And so it uh, doesn't matter if you're in the country or the city, that's something that uh, that that every person uh, sh has the ability to do and and, and should should uh, definitely um, use that that right um, and so I, I'm excited for you, Corey. Yeah, me too. I'm definitely gonna do it. I you know I was thinking my kids are really like artsy and they love to paint and so I was thinking as I cut those boards maybe they could decorate the sides. Before Most we definitely, up, yeah. You know, um, and I don't know what we would use. I don't want to use. <laughs> So some kind of paint, I guess. Uh, you, guess. You, as long as it's on the outside, it wouldn't wouldn't necessarily worry about it too much. Yeah, yeah, it'll be. Fun. I mean, I wouldn't go out and find some lead paint on, uh, you know, on eBay. But uh. no, we've well, we've got house paint that we've used, like you know, the stash of house paint for inside. Yeah. 
I don't know if it'll be good for outdoor, but you know, whatever, we'll figure it out. Oh yeah. Whatever they want. So as long as they're having fun with it, that's what I found. As long as the kids are having fun with it, you know, you want to harvest things. Don't get me wrong, but as long as they're out having fun with it, it's a win-win. And uh, like I said, the nice thing about the raised beds, just so everyone understands is you're, you're, you're just committing to something that is very easily, you know, if you have to weed it, it'll, t- you know, if you, if weeds were to just take over the bed, which wouldn't necessarily happen, but, but it could, you know, if it ha- did have, you would spend 15, 10, 15 minutes, just, you know, taking it out and you're good to go, you know, maybe yeah. less than that. Whereas it's not like your weeds aren't going to just come in and encroach on this and just, you know, where, whereas a lot of people will put something in ground, try to grow it, get frustrated, not necessarily tend it as much as they should, or, kind of be as present as they should. And so raised bed, I would, I would recommend this as well. I guess we didn't talk about this location wise. I would keep it as close to the house to where, uh, and this is a permaculture principle. And so I'm, 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 I'm repurposing this, this, uh, this story or lesson. So don't, don't quote me for it, um, is as close to the house that in the morning you throw your slippers on you go walk out there, you harvest some spinach for breakfast, or you, you grab some herbs for, for lunch or whatever, that by the time you walk back to the house, the dew has not soaked your slippers. All right. Wow. You don't want this way in the back of your way in the back of the yard. Uh, you don't want it tucked somewhere where you, you don't go visit. This is somewhere where you're going to visit it quite often. It doesn't have to be right in your front yard. So, you know, whatever, but it has to be, it should be somewhere where you're going to go out there. You're going to be able to be, be present there to make sure that things are growing. Things are, um, things are happening that they should, like they should. Um, and so that would just be something I recommend as well. Beautiful. I'm going to get on and I'm going to make a plan for this. This sounds like a lot of fun. So, oh yeah. And in your climate, I'll just throw one more thing in there. And in everyone's climate, a raised bed like that, a quarter of the raised bed or whatever, you grow a lot of herbs. You know, grow your favorite herbs in there. Basil, part, you know, you only need one or two basil plants, one or two parsley plants. You know, the, 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 you imagine we don't use a lot of these things. And so uh, being able to being able to grow in there is uh, a lot of options, a lot of options. I'll say that. I love it. Well, thanks, Gabriel. I mean, this is a, this is a great start, man. What a great start. What a good episode idea. And then uh, next week we'll be talking about, I forget, what is next week? Next week, we'll go part two, and that's going to be more so my recommendations uh, for once you get it up and going or once someone has something up and going. Um, I know you were asking more so specifically on kind of wanting to go grow greens, but yeah. I'm going to have a little gar- or a little plant that you could put together for one or two raised beds so that you could um, hypothetically grow tomatoes, peppers uh, part of the year. You know, you could grow a lot of these different things that are... Uh, instead of just green so that you can kind of get your feet wet 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 with everything i love it yeah and i think i'll get a rain a rain collector a rain not a rain what do you call that a rain rain you get a rain barrel if you'd like yeah thank you rain barrel yeah i think rain barrels will do well um we have a couple of those from our local water company that uh they had a art competition with kids that painted outside of them and so i think uh that would be great we could donate you know to the organization or something like that so yeah yeah and i mean your your own municipal water is fine um but if you can if you can catch capture it and use it in the garden even better amazing all right man well all right. as always thanks for watching everybody check us out at the plantpowereddadhour.com you can also see our facebook page and of course as always message us anytime comment on the video and let us know if you have any subjects you want to talk about maybe there's something you want to learn uh about how i you know live this you know plant-based life with my kids or maybe you want to know how gabriel raised a plant-based baby how does he do that stuff so whatever you got we we got you we're just two dads trying to help make the world a better place one plant at a time so uh we look forward to having you tune in and gabe you want to close us out hey it's it's always fun like i said if you uh, want to let us know also where you're from any other questions you have we like looking at those and seeing where everyone's listening in from. And then uh, just uh, send your best uh, thoughts and prayers over to Corey because it looks like he has a lot of snow to shovel. And uh, we will see you all in another episode very, very soon. We'll see you guys. Bye, everybody.